Hello and welcome, Rosemary, to this show. This is our show called Media Star People because our school, Media Star TV Presenter School, we gather people together from all over the world for them to find some new ways to develop their skills, their ways, their career strategy. And I'm super happy to see you and to have you today uh, as my guest to this show. So thank you and welcome today to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored, really honored to be able to meet you with this um, on this venue and to be able to um, just talk with you. I'm, I'm very happy about that because I know your strong story and I know that this story can be very motivational for people. But let's start from nowadays, from today. Uh, why are you here inside the TV presenters course? Well, recently I found myself in a wheelchair and I was not able to move around the way that I wanted to. And I, my mouth was working, my hands were working and uh, my brain was functioning. And I thought, you know, I don't like this, that I'm not mobile. So um, what, can I, what can I do to make a difference in this, um, in this world? Can I continue my life without without um, my feet. And I found that the internet was quite a, a venue, an avenue for me to use my skills. So I found you on Facebook, imagine of all places. And I contacted you and you called back and it was very personal. The way you contacted me, it was very, very personal. And I felt engaging with the conversation. You made it very personal and I felt like it was a good fit. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it because, because you know, uh, in the United States, there are a lot of scammers and problems and people usually they don't even pick up the phone. So when you pick up the phone, I understand like, oh, that's the first step. That's the first thing that you can do towards your dream. And, uh, you know, media, uh, especially TV or radio, uh, you should be very, very proactive to work mm -hmm. inside this industry. That's why even picking up your phone, it showed me that, wow, this person is definitely, I haven't even say, seen you before, but I understood from the tone of your voice, from everything that this person is definitely a person with a great story to share and to find some answers. Okay, that's very nice to hear from you, this feedback, thank you. And uh, as for the classes, uh, now you are inside of the practical experience. Are these skills something new for you or you will already had some ideas about these skills? Well, I had some ideas for, about these skills, but the problem was that I was insecure and um, the classes are giving me confidence to, to find my inner self, my core, um, the onion pieces of um, slices or the outer sections of the onion is falling apart and it's getting to the core as to who I am. And that um, my story, as far as who I am, it's okay. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to look like a movie star. My story is legitimate. And, um, if, I'm, and if I'm be honest and be confident in, in my story, that I'll be okay. I just, I, I like it, Adora, the way you look, I like your beautiful hairstyle today and every time. And I, I like that we can highlight all, you, all your personality and all your skills and feelings uh, with all these ideas that media provides us with. Okay, and what about your story, especially? You told about who you are. So let's go deeper inside who you are. So who you are, Rosemary? Who am I? <laughs> who am I? I'm a, a 62-year-old female who is a pastor, who's been a pastor since 1994. And um, my story starts with the fact that my mom gave birth to me when she was like 16 years old. And to provide a home for me, she went to England and marry someone and um, it was a very hostile relationship but her idea was to bring me 
to England from Jamaica, because I'm originally from Jamaica, and um, that relationship did not work out. He, he murdered her. He stabbed her 13 times. So I was never able to meet my mom. And um, with that tragedy, I was raised by my great grandparents. And my great grandparents came out of slavery. They were born in the 1800s and they shared all kinds of stories with me. And um, their lack of education was evident in my early um, education. They were not able to read stories to me, but they told me lots of stories. They were storytellers. And I adapted to that storyteller telling and the creativity that went into telling me their stories. So from that experience being raised by, by multiple family members, I wanted to help other people. So I ended up in college studying social services. And then I went on to being ordained. I went to seminary and became a chaplain. And, um, and in my 60s now, I found myself studying to be a lawyer. And um, so I will be able to provide more services to the community. So that's a nutshell of um, who I am right now is um, I'm a civic minded person who is always trying to find areas how to help other people, how to make their lives more functional, more self-sufficient. And um, so they'll be able to enjoy a little bit of an abundant life. Wow, that's just, I have even, even uh, me, I'm speechless here because this story is very, you told it in a short way, but you told it in a very deep way. So I can even imagine this. I, I can't even imagine what have you felt there, but I can even imagine why are you here and why do you want to share this story and why do you want to help people? Okay, but if you consider only one point, the most significant point of human's life, for example, the people who you help, uh, what would you advise? For example, it can be like common advice for everybody if they feel struggling, if they find some, themselves struggling with some um, problems. What would you tell them? If they're struggling with a problem, problem of underemployment you're not able to pay your bills finances are low the first thing i would tell them is to get educated get an education i'm not telling you to go to college but you can get a six weeks course online to become um an event planner or to be a veterinarian assistant assistant or it could be getting a food handler's permit to work with McDonald's, you go in immediately as a manager or something like that. But um, don't think that you have to have a PhD. No, I'm saying go and do a three weeks course, become a CNA or a home health aide, something that is going to give you a skill to be employable. Because to be just be a dishwasher, it's not enough. It's not, it's not enough to pay a bill. I'm not speaking low on that job. You start someplace, but get a trade, get something that will make you employable. And once you find yourself in a position where you're being employed and you're making a little bit more money, don't stop there. Think of the next position, get another training to enhance that. And then get you start off as a HHA, become a CNA. From a CNA, you can go and learn to do for me, or you may learn to be um, a nurse's assistant, or you might become an LPN or an RN, but you can keep moving up the ladder so you'll be able to be more employed. For the more education you have in a field, the more money you'll be able to earn so you can pay your bills. Oh, that sounds very inspirational because it sounds like a plan. So that I think that will give people their confidence. This will provide their confidence. That's why I can definitely tell that I see you as a TV presenter or as an expert in some fields. But what about your personal story? Um, what have you advised yourself when you found yourself struggling with some problems? When I found myself struggling, 
I had to tell myself, get up, get up. It, does, it doesn't help to sit down and, um, and be sorry for yourself. Sorry doesn't pay bills. Sorry only opens the door for depression and, and, and anxiety. What do, I tell, what do I tell myself? I take a shower. First thing, if it's in the morning, I wash off all the dirt and grime and the nose that are on my body. Wash it off, get dressed. Pretend you're so special that you're going out for a job interview. Just get dressed, get, treat your body, treat yourself nicely, get pretty and talk to yourself and say that I'm worth it to start. I am enough to start right now. And then from there, you, you, you find people who are in the field that you're interested to learn something. Go and volunteer. I'm the biggest volunteer in town. I will yeah. volunteer all over the place just because I want to get connected to the people that, I'm, that, I'm, that is inspiring me and they nurture me to get the work done. I, I volunteer as a cook. I cook for the homeless. I volunteer in a bakery. I learn to bake. I volunteer as a dressmaker. I sew. I volunteer to do... Um, you name it, I'm there, all right? It, I'm, I'm always, I will be an understudy, but then I also give back. I teach what I learn. And then if I can't learn fast enough, there's always YouTube. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and I'll tape it into, I'll Google it and say, you know, what else can I learn? How can I make it better? And then I move, you know, I move on. You know, I, I, I just, I dream about that people will know more about you. I found on your Facebook that this video where you are dancing. So, and you <laughs> touched it like I am dancing after my wheelchair experience. So what do you think? Is it a miracle or it's more, more likely a hard work of you? To, to dance, to do that dancing was yeah. the biggest thing that I could have done. I just wanted to dance. I heard the music. I got up and I was like, I'm going to dance. I'm determined. And my children were looking at music to say, oh my God, look at mommy. There was just something in me that just wanted to dance, dance, dance. And um, so I did. I got up and I danced. It felt so good. It really, it uplifted me. I felt better. Yes, I had a little ache and pain later, but for that moment, in that moment, I danced. In that moment, Incredible. I danced. It's like wanting an ice cream and saying, oh, I'm on a diet. For that moment, that ice cream means a whole lot more to you than a diet. For that moment, it's not tomorrow. It's not yesterday, it's that moment. So that moment, I wanted to dance. And so I danced. I'm surprised but, you saw that. <laughs> yes, I saw that. Because when you are a journalist, you need to investigate everything about your guests and find um, different, you know, pleasant moments for them to remember, to remind them about some. Um, but, but first of all, I was impressed because as far as I understood you, experienced some problems with your legs and that moment was a kind of a miracle that's what i saw there that's why because it, when we see like dances over tiktok or somewhere it's not a miracle for us everybody dances but what stands behind this dance that's what's matter right and the story behind that dance was i got up i wanted to dance so I danced. That was the first time when you got up or it, it's, it was just hard for you, but you did it before. No, I didn't do it before. But that moment, I wanted to dance. I heard the music. It brought back memories. And I stood up and I was like, you know what? To heck with the wheelchair. To heck with the walker. I had somebody who was holding me up throughout the, that, that party. And I got up and I was like, little step. You, you, I could see where I made some missteps, but it was okay. Life is not perfect, you know? 
But at that moment, yes, I wanted to dance, so I danced. It I'm was so wonderful. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> even now, <laughs> I'm so happy for you then because I, I can't even imagine what you felt there. So mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was just a miracle. Now that's uh, why I felt it when I was watching that video. I, felt, I thought, oh my God, it's just a miracle in front of my eyes. So it, I definitely was. So um, what about your uh, experience after? After that, you said goodbye to your wheelchair or you continue waiting for such moments? I, I continue to use a walker. Whenever I'm in um, distress, I will use a walker. I'm not going to pretend that I'm all that and more. If I need a support, I, I, I will use the walker. So um, it's always close by. It's not far away. But you, it means that you every time, every day, you face again this challenge, challenge and you overcome yes. it. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, and it's never, it's, it's never um, a bad thing to rely on support, whether it's um, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a physic, um, physical therapist, or a walker. It's never, ever uh, a shame to have a, a support. Yeah, uh, I know that in the United States, uh, I, I think so, it's not a problem to have a psychologist, nothing is embarrassing here, and the people, they don't feel ashamed by having and meeting a psychologist, but what do you think about this support? Uh, when are those maybe dark times when people need this support more, more of all? they should seek help. We are not here by ourselves. We're here to support each other. In my circle of friends, I, we have a lawyer, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. I'm the pastor. And um, we have um, other support, strong, we have a teacher. And whenever there is a need, we know exactly who we can call on not someone who is going to say, oh, there she goes again. No, but somebody say, what can I do to help you right now? And that person supports you. The next time it might be somebody else and they make, they reach out and I'm there for that person. So it is good to have a support system. It's not embarrassing to have a friend or to go and seek a psychiatrist. It's not embarrassing. It should not be a stigma to go and seek professional help for mental health. But mental it's really, health. yeah, but I think that it's really a very significant step. So when people realize that they need help, maybe they will go and seek. But I know many people who don't, they don't realize that they need help. They just don't even think about it. They think about everything be besides this. What uh, should we do with maybe we society? How can we help them? Maybe we can, because I know many people, even my students who uh, are, for example, missing the class. Like I can't uh, join today because my friend's daughter, uh, she made a suicide. What is going on around us? How can we help just people who are not psychologists, not um, experts in this field? How can we support other people? Well, the first thing is to look at each of us as human beings, as a brother, as a sister, and um, being there as a friend, listen. Not necessarily sitting down and staring them in the eye, but while, you're, while they're talking, you're listening for something to say that they need some help. And um, someone might say, you know, I had a flat tire this morning. I was, it made me late for work. That's a sign to say they're under stress. How can you help? Maybe you could say, of Amazon, I send baskets of fruits to my friends just because I listened and um, not criticizing, I'm not judging. I'm there for that person at that moment. And um, we're not handing out, we're giving the hand up. 
to our friends. But just listen. It's so important. Just it's a it's amazing. Just don't say anything. Just listen. Just listen. And if they say something and you're not sure what they're saying, you you could repeat what they said. Did you just say that you are having a bad day? And they say yes. That's what I was saying. It means that you are listening. The conversation don't have to be an entire hour. You don't have to psychoanalyze the person. No, we're just simply listening. I care. I do care. It sounds very as a TV presenter's uh, working experience. So being a TV host of a show, of an mm -hmm. interview, you need to do the same uh, steps. You need to take them as you mentioned. So you need to just sit and listen and repeat some questions. So what about your own show? Do you have now a dream or a goal to create something uh, like Oprah did before? Yes, well, um, by attending the Media Star TV school, I've been slowly um, identifying what am I looking for. At first, I thought I was going to be a preacher and I was going to preach. Nah, I don't want to preach at anyone. And then um, I thought, okay, am I going to be an instructor and show how to sew and sew how to cook? No. Then the other part of me was, okay, I would love to listen to what their goals are and, um, and look for resources to help my guests to see their dream come true. So that's where I'm at right now with my um, idea is to, you know, even on religion, we have so many religion out there as far as, in, even in Christianity, we have the Methodist Church, the Anglican, the Adventist, the Jehovah's Witness. We have um, the Judaism. We have all these different religion out there clamoring for that one more soul. That can be quite overwhelming. But then inside of me or inside of the person that, that comes to me is, what do they believe in? Do they believe in a God? Okay. What does this God mean to you? Is this a God that you can talk to? feel is this a god that you believe that is up there or down here and then we can um I, the word that they use in the jewish um, synagogue is midrash we talk about it tell me how do you feel about this god and then at that point they can tell you exactly how they feel and then come we can come to a conclusion to say yes okay god is not up there in the sky he's actually here right here with us Let's have a communication or a relationship with this God in, in you. And he wants you to be the best you, you want to be, the best you can. You know, so stuff like that, you know, I'm, I'm at that point to be able to say, yes, let's, let's um, navigate through all this menagerie of things and ideas and make sense. Let's, let's make sense of who we are and where we're at. It sounds very encouraging for people, I think, because when people, you know, there are so many uh, things all around the day, because, for example, mm -hmm. as for me, uh, despite having all the plans, despite having, despite uh, waking up at uh, 6 a.m. or something, sometimes I found myself at the evening. And it's not about that I'm tired. It's about how fast the time flies. It's just, it, it, it just uh, I can't even explain how I feel about that because I have so much things to do, so many people to talk to, to help to, because our students, I want to help everybody. I want to have help every other student because they are in the middle of something new they want to ask me an advice because i'm i have a huge experience in media i'm working for the nine uh, last nine years i'm working here as a, a coach as a director of this school and i'm sharing my professional experience of being a tv presenter and journalist and that's what i want to help people with and sometimes i'm finding myself like wow it's been half of the year for example time flies it's mm -hmm. just incredible so mm -hmm. maybe sometimes we need this uh, um, slowing down and we need to talk to someone and sometimes maybe even if we don't have time to call someone 
maybe we should talk with someone who is inside us. Uh, but here is my question. Do we need to visit a church to talk to God? No. No, we don't need a church. No. The reason for the church as a building is to encourage each other to see other like-minded folks coming together to have the same like-mindedness towards the same concept of who God is. So basically, we, the presence of more than one person, it's an encouragement to say that I too took the time out this morning, took a shower, got dressed, drove into this building to be with you, my friend. So I can stand there with you to worship the same God, basically. So that's what the purpose of that building is, is for us to connect. It's great to hear because sometimes when I want to talk to God, I think, oh, maybe I should visit a church. But then I understand that, no, it's just inside us. Yes. And uh, thanks to you uh, and to people who are inside our course, inside the educational process, I uh, know more. Uh, every time I learn more even from everybody on their own programs or on their conversations, interviews and ideas about everything. So I'm super happy about that and sharing when you share you then you receive. Um, what about the topic? The topic that we had was about the previous class was about archetypes. And you texted me that this topic was very important for you. Why do you think and what did you feel that time? As far as the mother hero and king? Yes. That one. Well, as a female pastor, I've been criticized and um, reprimanded for being too aggressive, for being too assertive, for being too much in people's faces and trying to be too much like a man. So I was trying my very best to tone it down. But then by tone it down, I became very, um, the word is phony. I was not my true self. I was trying to be somebody that I was not. And um, being assertive, it means that I am equipped with information that somebody else doesn't have. Being aggressive means, to me, it means that I want a certain result when I'm, at, when I'm approaching a project. So once I understood that for me, I, um, I enjoyed being a hero. <laughs> And being a hero is where I can be nurturing and I'll be able to offer resources to empower the, the listener or the person that I am working with to be better than who they are. So that's, that was my removing the outer layer of my onion to get to my core. Hi, just incredible because uh, I know that many people, they share with me, my students, they share with me through all of their experience of being on the course because somebody are on the course, um, uh, some people are on the course for six weeks, uh, weeks, some of them for three months, for a year because we have a, a year last in program. So many people, they share with me that like, I am here in the course not only because it start, it helps me to start my YouTube channel or to elevate my um, expertise and making it making working on my public publicity, uh, but also people share that these skills they help them in their real life, just in everyday life, in everyday routine. And I'm very happy to hear that. I'm very blessed to hear that because really archetypes, it's a very important topic. And I'm really surprised that your group, your group gained this skill and understood how to work with it just from scratch, just from one class, because sometimes it, it takes uh, two, three, four classes to overcome these barriers and feel the difference. And I 
really appreciate the way that you did it, the way that you did it very fast. So I think that this definitely is something that you can use now in everyday routine. What about your plans for now in media? Now you are somewhere in the middle of the course. Uh, what do you feel now? What maybe new goals do you have now uh, inspired by the process of education around school? Okay, well, I um, a job was offered to me. I accepted last night. And then my um, background in marketing and networking and outreach will allow me to um, promote the radio station and promote my, my, my program. So not just going online to do a, a, a TV or a radio show, but I'll be able to promote myself and promote the station and to be able to get the information out. So last night I called and I was working with the, um, with the producer and I was talking with him to see where his direction is, where his direction is going. And he said he would like to have a newsletter for the radio station. And I said that I can help you with. And then he asked about um, what kind of format I'm going to have. So I was able to explain to him quite vividly for him to understand. And he was saying that was perfect. So I didn't have to be sitting down like I'm in a therapy session looking for him to tell me what he wants. But instead, I could tell him what I was capable of doing. And that made a difference because I would have had to live up to his expectations. Now I have my expectations to live up to. It's just, I, 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 I'm so happy for you. So this Thank is you. what we're, this is what is going on and what should be uh, going on every day. So I'm super happy about you, about your results. And I look forward to meet you again and again, because I do these interviews for a regular basis and no more news about you and First of all, I would like to see all these episodes of your shows. I would like to watch them, to share them with our students and to make your story as a very, uh, as a story of a very successful person. It, it is now, this story is like this now, but I would like you to, sh to show, I would like to show you more new ways of committing this journey and making you and all your viewers um, get into their goals and their dreams and making their dreams come true and I wish you this way to feel yourself very happy on this journey and to be able to, to help many people wide audience I wish you these things thank you Rosemary for joining me today to my show uh, I'm I'm waiting for our next class to give you new new tasks, new ideas, because now we have new goals to open, to follow. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you so much for mentoring me. And thank you so much for the school. Gosh, it's a blessing. Thank, thank you. you, thank you so much. It thank was you. I wish you a blessed evening and a great weekend and see you on Saturday. This is it, my friends. Here you watched one of our next episodes. This is it, my friends. Now you know Rosemary Roth. You know her story. And you can definitely follow her journey and her program on TV, on radio. And what I definitely know that you also have a dream. You also have a goal. And let's join and go deep inside the educational process and make and work on your dream together for this dream to come true very soon. This is me, Yara, and I'm waiting you on our TV presenter school. This is practical school, so you'll definitely will elevate your skills too much times forward. See you and have a great day. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and turn on the bell time.